It's almost time. Now we'll find out once and for all about Clark Kent, Superman. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a TV show. Yes, but who is he? What's his name? He's Superman. Golly, Clark, won't that be wonderful seeing Superman? Fighting a never-ending battle for truth, justice, oh, no. and television the me TV way. No one can do the things that Superman does. The Adventures of Superman. Now on me TV Fresno, Xfinity 187. Hi, I'm John Mallis. Welcome to this live edition at Connect With Me on the showroom floor at Ventura TV on this day. Today, the main focus will be the Armenian Genocide, the 100th anniversary, of course. We'll have a guest in the studio here to talk about that and a special concert coming up next weekend. Also, in the second half of the program, we'll talk a little bit about this uh, plastic bag ban. And then how about the vote last night at City Hall? Holy smokes, 436 Me TV. Option 11, back in just a moment. Back here on the program, ladies and gentlemen, from the showroom floor at Ventura TV on a Friday. Boy, where, you know, where are these days and weeks going? It seems like the week is already over. March is starting already. It seems as though we just uh, finished the holidays, Christmas and New Year's. My goodness. And the vote, of course, took place last night at City Hall. We'll talk a little bit about that. And I'll even get out my flip-flops, my friends, and talk a little bit about one council member who flip flopped last night. It is no secret. Uh, it's in the paper today. It's in your Fresno Bee. We'll talk a little bit about that and then talk a little bit about this plastic bag uh, ban. But for now, we're going to talk about the 100th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. That's going to come up. That's the main focus. First, I want to tell you that we're live on Comcast Channel 187 and 43.6 and now 13.1, of course. The replay comes later in the day at 2 o'clock on YouTube, 13.6. 6, 8 o'clock tonight, 4.6, that would be Biz TV. And in the Twitter account, I promise you I will update this over the weekend. It's, uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's John, at John Mallows, me TV. Now to the main focus of our program, and it is the Armenian Genocide. And the Central Valley, as you know, is home to about 40 thousand Armenian strong right here in the Fresno and surrounding area of the Central Valley. Many of those lost relatives, friends in the genocide they will never forget. I want to roll the videotape. Very disturbing images as I might uh, add to this. To this day it is one of the worst, one of the worst tragedies and mass killings of Armenians that came under the Ottoman rule back in 1915, and by the time it was over, up to 1.5 million Armenians had been slaughtered. To this day, the United States government does not recognize the genocide. That alone, my friends, is a tragedy in uh, and of itself. The fact that 23 countries around the world do recognize it. There were death marches across Syria, the Syrian desert. Some 250 Armenian intellectuals and community leaders were rounded up and arrested in Constantinople. Other men and children and women followed, and it appears those death marches were designed to exterminate the entire Armenian population. Live in our studio right now to talk about the genocide and to talk about the Armenian Genocide uh, is John Chukasian. He is right here. He is going to talk about the Armenian Genocide Centennial Concert that takes place at Fresno State uh, next Sunday, March the 8th at 2 o'clock. We're going to take your phone calls. If we can hold it down here in the studio, 436-ME-TV, option 11. We're back in just a moment. Tune in to Heartland for the best in true country music. Relive vintage specials, one-of-a-kind concerts, and country music's earliest videos. Heartland is the heart of country. The only place where you can find country music, country stars, and country lifestyles 24-7. 
Heartland, the heart of country. Now on channel 13.2. Is taking care of laundry taking too much of your time? Have you become a missing mom? With a new fast, efficient washer and dryer from Ventura TV Video Appliance, you'll spend more of your day the way you want. Save now on Frigidaire's Advanced Affinity Laundry Pair. Let Frigidaire save you energy, water, and time. Don't spend your life on laundry. Upgrade today at Ventura TV Video Appliance and save. Back here on the program, connect with me, 436 Me TV Option 11. John Chikazian is here to talk about the Armenian genocide and the concert that's coming up. Welcome to the program, John. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Mr. Malos. I'm uh, a really an admirer of yours. I've been following your career for quite a while, oh. and you're a credit to the TV industry, sir. Well, I appreciate it. You're a credit, too, <laughs> to your industry, and I appreciate you being here. I want to roll the videotape again of the Armenian genocide and, um, you know, I don't know if you lost friends or relatives in, in, in the genocide. You did. Lost many, my whole family. Many of the people who live here that are Armenian here in the Central Valley in Fresno uh, did, in fact, lose uh, many of their relatives. And it, it's, it's a crime. We'll put the map up again later. Uh, we did that during the monologue a little bit. But talk about, you know, talk about the genocide, the, the fact that this government doesn't recognize the genocide. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's very, very true. That's, un that's one of the most unfortunate things that we as Americans, we talk about justice, we talk about equality, we talk about many aspects that are really should be part of every society in the, in the United States and the world, and yet something as tragic as the first genocide of the 20th century is being totally, totally d ignored by our American government because the Turkish lobby has paid millions of dollars to these American PR firms and they go and lobby our congressmen and senators to more or less support their denial. And this is a tragedy within our own government and it's very sad and it should stop immediately because genocide, no matter what nationality it is, it's something that should never, never, never happen again. And Hitler said why he basically caused the Holocaust. He was, the premise was that he said, well, who remembers the Armenian genocide or who will, which was the impetus for him to more or less plan the Holocaust of the Jews and the other ethnic groups that lived in the area, the Polish and the Russians and so on and so forth. Yeah, those images are very disturbing to look at, to say the least. Um, very difficult to talk about and to look at some of those. Uh, 1.5 million, of course, Armenians uh, were slaughtered. And so, um, you know, the fact that this government doesn't recognize it, um, what does that tell you about some of the other countries that do not recognize it as well? There's only 23 around the world who, that, that do. It's because of the lobbyists in Washington. They're paid handsomely to go and, and solicit votes from the congressmen and from the senators to vote against any genocide, especially the Armenian. And this is the tragedy of justice, and this is the tragedy of our society. Uh, my parents went through the Armenian Genocide, and it's a, it's a wonder that they even lived. My mother uh, was one of seven children. My grandmother had to bury five of her children in the desert sands because of deprivation of water, food, and exposure to the sun. Uh -huh. So, I mean, our whole family was wiped out. My father's whole family was wiped out. He's the only survivor. My mother was the only survivor. I want to I put that map up again, John, and... and I don't totally understand the map when I look at it. And there are several different maps online of the of the death marches. Yes. It's, it's kind of hard to tell. We see all the, okay. all the all the countries there. I'll let you pick it up. All right. You see the circles. Mm -hmm. The largest circles indicate that that was the hardest hit area where they wiped out the men, women, and children. The smaller circles indicate that there was not as terrible of tragedy. So you see three huge circles where most of the population of that area was <laughs> murdered, raped, or sent into the Syrian desert to die, which most of them did. So that's, that's it. And let me just mention too, this is not just about the Armenians. It's about the 
Greeks, it's about the Pontian Greeks, it's about the Assyrians, it's about the whole Christian population of Turkey. The aim of the Turkish government at the time, the Ottoman Turks, was to basically rid all of Turkey of its Christian population. Mm -hmm. And anybody that was a Christian unfortunately suffered at that time. These were the radical ideologists and it was basically three people that were the leaders. One was Enver, one is Talat, and one is Jamal. Now as we see that map there, John, is this a modern day map? Is that modern day Armenia, Turkey, Syria, Iraq as yes, we know it, it today? Yes, this is a modern day map that's indicating the horrors that happened within that area in the green. Mm -hmm. In the green. And in so the green. these death marches, they took the intellectuals out first. Yes, they did. About yes, 200 did. or so, right? But you see out the, of Constantinople. Is right, that correct? And they correct. marched them across the desert. Then men, women, and children followed after that? Yes, you see that large circle in the desert right above Syria? Yes, sir. That's the people that perished in the desert. And mm. many of them basically died, again, of deprivation from water, food, and exposure to the sun. Many of the people were naked walking through the desert. So it was, and they did horrible things to women. They, besides the raping, they tortured them, they burned them, and they called us infidel pigs because we were not believers of the faith. These were the radical Muslims. We're not talking about the regular Muslims of, of, of society. We're talking about the radical Muslims. Just like 100 years later, ISIS is the radical Muslim that we are facing today. So 100 years later, their ideology has not changed. This is the sad thing that, you know, you think that history would teach us something important about humanity, about, about the way to treat your fellow man. But, you know, when you murder someone because they don't believe the same way you do, this is really a tragedy in the 21st century. This yeah. is what's sad. It really is. And, um, you know, I didn't realize that uh, there, were, there were other ethnic groups besides the Armenians there during, during the marches. And you, you mentioned Greeks and who else? Greeks and Assyrians and Christians that happened to be in the area because they were not privy to being just because they were a German or French or American or anything else, they were not privy to basically to be saved. If the Turkish army uh, wanted to exterminate them, they did it on the spot. So there was no question about, you know, their, again, the reason that one of this, the political reason why this happened was as of world, before World War I, because the Turks treated all of their people under their, under their basically under their domination, like the Bulgarians, Romanians, Hungarians, Albanians, and all of North Africa and all of the Arab countries. These were, we were all second class citizens, the minorities and majorities. No one was equal to the Turk, unfortunately. And that's why these rebellions started and they started kicking the Turks out of each one of these countries respectively. And as a result, m millions of Turks were pouring into Turkey without food, without shelter, without jobs. And they saw the affluent Greeks and Jews and Armenians and Assyrians. And this was one of the reasons why, uh, besides the religious aspect of it, this is one of the reasons why the people were slaughtered and driven out of their homeland. Armenians were there as of 5,000 years. And of course, there's only a few remaining. And of course, most of the Greeks are gone. The Pontian Greeks are all gone. And the ancient Cappadocian Greeks that basically were part of Alexander the uh, Great, they're gone too. So all you have is just basically yeah. Greeks now living in Istanbul, and that's about it. And okay. even there, the Turks have closed the Greek schools, they've closed their monasteries, and so on and so forth. So there is no okay. justice, unfortunately. This is the sad we're, part of our we're gonna We're going to come back with John Chukasian, the uh, Armenian genocide, 100 years old this year. Uh, April 24th uh, marks the date, and it is the first modern-day genocide here um, that we can talk about, 1915. 436, MeTV, option 11. Back in a moment. When you're looking for Whirlpool innovation and quality, who has the answers, the selection, the price? Ventura TV Appliance. With billions in nationwide appliance buying power, more than Home Depot and Best Buy combined will help you save. Our low prices on Energy Star qualified Whirlpool appliances save you energy and money and pay no interest on select models when paid in full within 12 months. Ventura TV Appliance, serving you since 1951.
You can find movies on Over the Air Channel 13.3. Movies. Our name says it all. Ventura TV Appliance Center. We're the low price leading brand's reliable advice place. The Frigidaire Gallery Dream Kitchen Get Yours Today Place. You with me? Right now, get huge savings on select Frigidaire Gallery appliances and pay no interest when paid in full within six months at the hometown low price think outside the big box place. Since 1951, Ventura TV Appliance Center, we're working hard to be your place. We're back here talking about the Armenian Genocide, and I do want to hold this poster up. It's called the Armenian Genocide Centennial Concert. Uh, here's the poster right here. It takes place on March the 8th on Saturday at 2 o'clock. at Sunday, Fresno Sunday. St oh, Sunday, I'm sorry. Sunday at 2 o'clock, March the 8th. And, um, John, this is your concert. I see here featuring the Chukasian Armenian Concert Ensemble. Is yes, that correct? Sir. That's correct, sir, yes. All right, tell me a little bit about that. Well, all of the musicians, we've been, we've been doing concerts and festivals for the past 22 years. All of the musicians in the ensemble are conservatory graduate musicians from Armenia and the United States. And we play traditional music of Eastern Armenia and historic Western Armenia. We are the only group oh. in the United States that does this. There are wonderful groups throughout the country and around the world. But we're the only one that play the b music of historic Western Armenia, which no longer exists, which is present-day Turkey, and, of course, Eastern Armenia, the New Republic. And, of course, on the program you're going to have the uh, wonderful Hamaskayan dances from L.A., the Nairi dance group, and there'll be about 30 of them. So it'll be a really a beautiful program dedicated to the commemoration of the Armenian Genocide with the Nairi folk dance group and the Chukasian Armenian concert ensemble. And this is really for the entire community. This is not an Armenian event. It's for the community event. And please come and support this because we want to put a stop to genocide anywhere in the world. It's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong. Killing people by the hundreds of thousands is not a cure. It's, a, it's an epidemic that must stop. Okay, John, I want to take uh, you to the videotape and others uh, watching at home to take a look and a listen to the concert that took place back in 2006, I believe. Yes. Same at kind same of concert. At the same place, the Armenian Genocide Centennial Concert. Take a listen as to what you might hear and see on March the 8th. Absolutely beautiful music there. Now, Thank where you. can t people purchase tickets? Well, there are several places. If you want to buy it online, it's brownpapertickets.com, or you could go to Fresno Deli on Gettysburg, okay. or you could go to Nina's Bakery, which is on West and Shaw, or you could go to the Royal Market Deli, which is off of Marks and Bullard, or you could go to Dr. Kalebjian, Dr. Kalebjian's office, which is off of uh, Palm, uh, not too far away f from basically the, the uh, Fig Garden uh, shopping center. So these are the four places that you can obtain tickets at three at the delis and of course at brownpapertickets.com. And now it's they're very about, nominal. What, $20? $20 dollars and fifteen dollars for students and, and kid children. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And 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 tell us a little bit about the ensemble and how, how the group was formed. Well because of the Armenian earthquake uh, that happened. Many people were displaced because there was no jobs for them, so the Armenian musicians had to seek work elsewhere. So many of them traveled around the world and a large contingent came to Los Angeles. So we were lucky enough to more or less uh, talk to these conservatory graduate musicians and tell them about our ideology that we want to form a, a, a professional concert group to, to more or less work around the world.
And when we established that, our first concert was at the Mark Taper Forum in Los Angeles, and it was packed. And we were all surprised that, uh, and they were all non-Armenians that, that came. Later on, as the group advanced, the president of Armenia personally invited us, and he, we did a one-month concert tour. And we're the only group from in California that's received the gold medal from the Armenian president himself. We have the National Gold Medal Award from the Armenian government. Really? And you yourself have actually won uh, this Emmy Award here. Uh, talk yes. a little bit about this thing is heavy. Go ahead and hold that up. Well, I'll hold it up. How's okay. that? I'll hold it yeah. up. Now, what is this exactly? Okay. And where did you, uh, how did you acquire this? Okay. You well, didn't buy this at Walmart, did no. you? No. Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, no. Yeah, yeah. This, was, this was awarded to you. This was awarded to us by the, this was the Armenian Grammy Award and this is an international award, and this album in front of me here. Oh, it's a Grammy what, for, for your album. Then. Yes, it's a Grammy for the group and the album that it was the best folk music Armenian album in the, in the international market. It was held at the Nokia Theater at the concert, mm -hmm. and uh, there were 7,300 people present when we were given this award. That is absolutely beautiful, yeah. and congratulations on that. Thank when was you. this uh, given to you? This was given to us at, in 2010. And uh -huh. uh, so we're the only group, I think, uh, in California as far as the folk music is concerned. Now, there are other categories, you know, that, right. that receive this. We're not the only one. How many members in the group? It goes from 10 to 14. The mm -hmm. average is usually 10 in our group, you know, and yeah. we do basically, like I said, concerts and festivals. That's I want to hear purpose. a little more music, don't you? Thank a you. A little bit more music uh, before we go to break here. Let's roll the videotape, and this is uh, videotape number two of the Armenian Genocide Concert celebrating or commemorating, I should say. That's the correct term, commemorating the 100th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. I could listen to that music all day long, of course, thank you, and thank you. Um, can we, yeah, okay. Uh, we have a caller on the line. Go ahead, you're on the air. Hi, John and John. Um, thank you for doing the show today, John. Uh, it, uh, as an Armenian here in the Central Valley, it's, uh, it's really nice to um, see that the local media is supporting uh, the Armenian cause and, and bringing more awareness. So thank you to the thank both you. of you um, for that. Um, John uh, Chikasian, I, I have seen him, th their group play, and they are a fantastic group. Um, I could imagine that in his long career, he's probably come across many people, maybe celebrities, or, I mean, does he have any special stories that maybe stand out in, the, in his long career as a musician that's traveled around the world? Um, that's my question. Thank you. I'll take my answer over there. Well, yes, I spent uh, 12 years in Las Vegas, and I, we played in all the major forums and hotels in Las Vegas, and yeah. I think that was probably the, the pinnacle of our career, where we, uh, you know, many of the hotels and their showrooms and, uh, and their special, uh, how shall I say, uh, concerts and, and, and uh, their conventions featured us. So, we, like I said, and while I was there, I also taught at the University of Nevada. I taught music there. So it was really a good experience of, of, uh, for the ensemble and for me also as a musician and as an educator. How did you learn how to play? Well, because of the Armenian Genocide, you know, everyone that came to our home, John, was basically su genocide survivors. So many of the displaced musicians, like the ones from Armenia after the genocide, came to our home. And I heard this music from a very young man and watched them play and, and watched them sing and watched them dance. So I had this beautiful experience from as a very young child. So that influenced me to more or less make it my mission 
to carry Armenian music and culture as an adult into my, as far as my, as my goal and my mission. John, let me ask you something. Have you spoken to during your travels, during your time, uh, and have you spoken to other people that have been involved in the genocide? Um, not only that, have you talked to Jewish people who were involved in the Holocaust during World War II and maybe lost family members there? Have you spoken to them? Oh, many times, many times. I, I uh, basically uh, knew so many Jewish people because when I went to NYU, when I celebrated the Holocaust there, they also celebrated the Armenian Genocide. So there was a lot of interchange going on between yeah. the to many of the people I spoke to about the Armenian Genocide. Got, got a caller on the line. Go ahead. Hello. I uh, am very interested in this concert, and I would like to know a little bit about the sponsors of the concert. Could you please uh, give me some information on that? Yeah. Well, right the there. poster there, right, right there. Right there. These are the sponsors. Oh, these are some of the sponsors. There, right. there are so many to mention here, though. Um, you know, there's EC, EECU, of course, is one of the oh, major sponsors. sponsors. Yes. And Lance um, Cashin Company. Right, right. National Raisin Company. Uh, I mean, the the list goes on. Mid Valley Packaging and Supply Company. So th there there are many sponsors. Too many to name right now. But uh, did you were you interested in purchasing tickets? Is that it? Well, yes, I am, and I'm going to go to one of the bakeries. But my question really is. Is this being put on by the university? Is it being sponsored by an Armenian group? That is my question. It's being sponsored by the Ani Guild of the California Armenian Home. And this is their dedication to the Armenian genocide because don't forget the home was started because these were the genocide survivors and they were getting old and there was basically no place for them. That's why the Armenians established the California Armenian Home and thank God it thrives today, and it's, and it's really one of the worst. If you haven't seen it, you must go out and see it. It's one of the most beautiful facilities in Fresno for seniors. So the Ani Guild, this is their annual event and fundraiser to bring money to the home so that people that more or less will be living there and are living there will have more comfort and more uh, things uh, you know available to them. So it's the Ani Guild of the California Home, sir. Right, right. Time to take a break here with John Chukasian, and uh, the concert takes place on March the 8th, the 100th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. At 2 o'clock on March the 8th at Fresno State. Uh, back here on the program, 436, Me TV Option 11. Don't forget, uh, in just a few minutes, we'll talk about the ban on plastic bags. It may not be a ban after all. It's going to a referendum. That's right. It'll be on the ballot. Back with your phone calls and much more of the program in a moment. Attention all units. We have reports of two motorcycle cops protecting California's highway. That's for us, good buddy. The Men of Chips are on MeTV. I am John Baker. I am John Baker. He's Officer Baker. He's the blonde one. Hi there. Officer Poncherello, man. Frank Poncherello. Oh, I'm Frank Poncherello. And he's the one who's Eric Estrada. There's no way I wouldn't remember a name like that. Catch the blonde one and the one who's Eric Estrada. On now Chips. on MeTV Fresno. Xfinity 187. Hi, uh, we're back here on the program. We're talking with John Chikazian, talking about the Armenian Genocide. Caller, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah, good morning. Morning, both of you. And to John, our guest for t this morning. Thank you. Uh, John, is there going to be Armenian dancing with the public that comes? That's my first question. <laughs> and the second question, what type of work do you do or business you have? Or is is the uh, ensemble your business? I should also ask that. Well, um, okay, so great. And thing. thank you. I'll take your question or answer <laughs> okay. off the, on the air. Thank, thank you, you very much. Time. Two great questions. Yeah. So dancing, you have to have dancing. Well, the thing is that yes, we're going to have the army of folk dancers from LA, the Naira group. Yeah. And they're wonderful, and they have beautiful costumes that have been made in Armenia. Yeah. And Don't be surprised if some of the audience members get up and dance as well. <laughs> well, you know, it's like it's like what it's, it was like, you know, the uh, old Greek commercial on the airlines. If you want to dance in the aisles, it's up to you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so infectious, you know. Yes. Once you see the dancing, you have to get up and dance. Go well, ahead. And the second part, I'm a retired educator. I retired from Bullard High School. My wife retired from the Majera School District. But yeah. Since since childhood, Armenian music and culture has been my passion, 
and I've done everything in my power to promote it in all levels, not just to the Armenians, but the general public. We have played many, many concerts and festivals where there wasn't one Armenian in the audience, and it was jam-packed. So, you know, music and dance is an international language that has no barriers. Just like if you go to an opera, most people don't understand Italian, but they love the music. So it's the same thing with Armenian music or Greek music or French music. It's, it's, it's a communication that really brings people together. And, and the money, again, goes to? The, all the money that is derived from this, from the ticket sales and the donations, go to the uh, California Armenian Home, yeah. and the Ani Guild will be presenting them a check in the future to help them with their projects. Is there a movement uh, to change the minds of those people that sit in Congress right now to recognize this genocide? I, I want to know if there's, a, if there's a movement right now. I mean, there should be if there isn't, right? Well, John, you know, for over, where are we now? Since 1923, when the genocide basically ended with the, with uh, most of the Armenians and Christians and Greeks and Assyrians and Jews, not so much the Jews, but uh, being more or less driven out of their homeland. Uh, you know, we've been basically fighting this. Uh, you know, President Wilson uh, accepted it, and he was going to have a mandate for Armenia so that, that la those lands would be preserved. But because, again, uh, because of political ploys and, and undercurrents and so on and so forth, it didn't occur. But, you know, the American people, and I have to thank them a, a million, million, million times, if it wasn't for the Near East Foundation that was established by the Americans in the United States, most of the Armenians in the Middle East would, would have perished. They provided millions and millions of dollars to give aid to those that came out of the Syrian desert, out of Deir Zor, and other Armenians that basically were displaced all over the world, especially in, in Syria and in Aleppo, where my mother was put into an orphanage and she was sold to an Arab family. And then later on, it's a long story, but she managed to leave there and, and come to the United States because my relatives sent money. But the point remains is that we've been fighting this since after 1923 to no avail. And this is a tragedy. This is a tragedy to our senators and congressmen. And all I have to say, those that have been voting with Turkey, shame on you. Shame on you for not holding up justice for an ethnic Christian group that rightly deserves it. You know, presidents in the past have supported us, and yet the, the president of the United States and, and the congressmen and senators of the United States do not acknowledge it. And shame on you for, for basically not supporting this. That's is it all strictly I politics? Oh, yes, it's the lobbyist. Turkey spends millions of dollars in, in lobbying funds so that the genocide will not go forward and will be squashed and will not be recognized by the American government. This is the, one of the saddest pages of our American history, John. Yeah, and, really and it is. just affects me and, and Armenians all around the world. You know, we've been fighting this and fighting this and fighting this and to no avail. And I uh, hope the new Congress coming in, and I hope the new president, whoever he's going to be, will finally come to his senses and say, hey, this has been a tragedy. This is enough. Turkey, you know you're supporting ISIS, and you're training ISIS, and you're funding ISIS, and we don't need you anymore, period. Thank you. Okay. John, I will uh, want to mention uh, this concert coming up again here. Uh, it is Sunday, not Saturday, as I said before. Sunday, March the 8th. Uh, 2015, of course, 2 o'clock at the uh, Fresno State Satellite uh, Student Union. Tickets are $20, and if you're a student, uh, you got an ID there, it's $15. Here is the poster right here. It's called the uh, Armenian Genocide Centennial Concert. There's dancing, there's music. Hey, there, there's even dessert, right? Yes, there's dessert, too. The <laughs> Anigil is pr uh, providing any, that. Any and, baklava? <laughs> well, I'm sure they're going to have I'm sure they're gonna have something ethnic. Uh, yes, yes, John. You know, All these right. are a great group of ladies. These right. are a great group of ladies that have been serving the home for, you know, almost 60, 70 years now. And each time they have raised so much money for the Army and Home, and I yeah. applaud them. They're a Wait. wonderful group of ladies. Uh, that have really, really supported the home, and of course the sponsors have, have supported the you home. Know, as the as I go to break, we hadn't planned this, as I go to break, I do want to play one of the concert videos as we go out uh, one more time. And before I do that, I want to thank you, Mr. Thank you. Chukasian. Thank you. Thank it's you. It's been a pleasure. Well, you're a and gentleman and a scholar. Thank, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. And come back on our show again sometime. When you invite me, I'd be happy All to. Right. And congratulations for this, the Emmy. All right. Thank it's you. Uh, Sunday, March the 8th, 2015. Here's what you'll hear and see.
ballad of Andy and Barney. Andy and Barney were lawmen, bravest you ever did see. Warned ever crook in the record book to stay out of Mayberry. They were the law. Yes, they were the law, and, and they didn't no fear. The Andy Griffith Show. I guess to sum it up, you could say there's three reasons why there's so little crime in Mayberry. There's Andy, and there's me. And baby makes three. <laughs> now on Me TV Fresno. Retro TV, your home for classic television. The greatest shows in history are here for you to enjoy. Join Cosby and Colt as secret agent men in I Spy. Ride along the Ponderosa with the Cartwrights in Bonanza. Hit the beat with Joe Friday in Dragnet. And that's not all. Retro TV offers endless fun and excitement for the whole family to enjoy. Retro TV, the best in classic television. You can find Retro TV on Over the Air Channel 13.4. Want to create something extraordinary? Create perfection. Our lifestyle appliances make it easy. KitchenAid, Ventura TV Appliance, and you, when only the best will do. Watch News Channel in Europe. Back here on the program, connect with me, uh, 436 Me TV Option 11. Uh, we'll get to your phone calls in just a few moments. But first, the ban on plastic bags right here in the state of California may not be going through after all. The issue goes to the voters in November of 2016. That's the latest development this week. It happened on Tuesday. That's because the members of the Plastic Bag Alliance became outraged, so they set out to collect more than 800,000 signatures. Let's roll the videotape as we're doing right there. In fact, they wanted to try to qualify this for the ballot initiative. And on Tuesday, the Secretary of State's office counted some 555,236 valid signatures, much more than needed of the 504,000, so now the people will decide. Governor Jerry Brown signed the ban into law last September, but after spending $3.2 million, 98% of that uh, money came from out of state. The plastic bag industry is now on the ballot here in California. Those who support the ban say they will fight with all their might to try to defeat that measure. Live now on the telephone from Washington, D.C. is John Barrier. He works for Edelman PR, but he is a spokesperson for the American Progressive Bag Alliance. John, are you there? John, I am here, and thanks for having me on today. Hey, I appreciate it. So you guys spent a lot of money to get this thing on the state ballot. Uh, so how do you think, what, what, when you put your finger in the air and you feel which way the wind is blowing, how do people in California feel about this initiative? Well, John, listen, the industry has been um, fighting this issue in California for a number of years. Um, this is something that for the 2,000 employees of the industry in the state is, is a critical issue, obviously, uh, that the industry wanted to invest in to protect those jobs and to protect the families that rely on those jobs to put food on the table um, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So. There was a significant investment over the last several years um, to advocate for the, the employees to try to communicate with legislators um, about the facts um, behind this product uh, and about the you know, impact that a ban or a tax or fee will have on the people that work in this industry. And also, um, what I think is you know, often overlooked by people who just gloss over this issue, that banning or taxing a product that represents a... In very insignificant portion of the waste stream and a very insignificant portion of the litter stream, by insignificant I mean uh, fractions of 1%, um, is not going to have any meaningful impact on the environment. Um, and a much more uh, you know, responsible 
uh, approach, an effective approach, is to really focus on recycling and recycling education. But you asked about you know prospects for 2016. The obviously the industry's goal was to get the signatures gathered. Uh, more than 800,000 folks signed up uh, to support the referendum against SB 270. And you know, we believe very confidently that once all the facts are on the table and after a significant voter education campaign, people will understand that this bill was never about the environment, that it ended up being a backroom deal between the big grocers in California, um, members of the California Grocers Association, and their union buddies uh, that you know, they, they obviously can supply with funds to scam consumers out of billions of dollars in bag fees, because as I think you know and a lot of your listeners might know, this bill bans plastic bags but then puts a 10-cent fee on paper bags and thicker plastic bags, what they're calling reusable, but um, we can get into that in a little bit. And none of that money goes to an environmental initiative or a public purpose. It's all 100% pocketed by the grocers, which is why they've been lobbying for it for several years. So this unholy alliance between the big grocers and environmental activists have resulted in a bill that ultimately will kill jobs you know, take billions of dollars from consumers and have no positive, meaningful impact on the environment. We think when people understand that and they really look into the facts and are communicated with in a, in a, in a smart way, that they're going to, you know, decide to vote this bill down. Yeah, hey, John, um, I'm going to ask you, you said this thing is not about the environment, yet there are those opponents uh, uh, of this, uh, of the plastic bags that say, you know, it takes hundreds of thousands of years uh, for those bags to actually disintegrate. It's bad for the environment. It's polluting the, the waterways. It's polluting the oceans. It's polluting our landfills. Uh, we can't get rid of those bags very quickly. It takes thousands of years to actually melt them away and get rid of them. And so what about the argument about the environment? You said it's not about the environment. It's about the grocery uh, chains making money off the, obviously, the consumers for charging uh, now to, to, to purchase those bags for 10 cents a piece. But what about the environment? Is there, some, is there merit to their argument is, is what I'm asking. Well, the idea that, that banning a product that is made in the United States from natural gas and that is 100% recyclable, and that's not 90% recyclable, it's 100% recyclable. It's a product that all you have to do when you're done with it, you can take it back to the grocery store, bundle them up over the course of several weeks, put them in the bin, and they are taken back to be recycled into new bags, into plastic decking, uh, into plastic benches. Uh, that All of that occurs on a regular basis with um, the plastic bag, film, and wrap recycling infrastructure that's been built around the country by you know, members of the plastic bag manufacturing and recycling industry. So when you're talking about banning a product that represents half of 1% of the waste stream, uh, according to the United States Environmental Protection Agency, less than 1% of litter in anywhere that it's been studied, that is generally the average amount, the idea that banning that product is going to have a meaningful impact on reducing overall waste or litter is simply false. And for the environmental activist community, which has been very vocal on this issue for the last several years, this is you know, little more than an easy target because it is visible. Um, it's something that people use every day. And when you make a lot of claims that aren't founded by fact and you use a lot of imagery and emotional arguments to um, try to convince people that this is the right thing to do, that can be effective. But at the end of the day, when people understand that this is a fundraising mechanism for the environmental activist groups, that by getting this type of hollow victory, uh, they're able to fundraise off of it and pursue other environmental legislation uh, that may or may not be um, wise legislation when you look at it from, from all angles. Uh, that's ultimately what this is. And that's why they figured out if they could band together with the grocers and call this a, an environmental bill, um, but at, you know, at the same time, all of this money goes to the grocers' pockets. I mean, if at any point this had been a bill that put some of this money to an environmental initiative or any public purpose, then the industry would probably have been a lot more inclined to talk about a compromise. And they have been for the last several years in California, but the grocers see enormous dollar signs. Again, we're talking billions of dollars every year. A study was done last year on this bill that showed up to $442 million per year will be reaped if SB 270 would go into effect, and all that money goes to the grocers from these right. bag fees and from sale of reusable bags. So, what? I mean, that's ultimately what this is when you peel back some of the layers, and that's why when voters understand this, 
our polling internally that we've seen on this issue is is very strong. Seventy percent of California voters uh, are opposed to an ordinance or a law that requires a ban on plastic and fees on other bags that are kept 100 percent by the grocers. Hey, it's been widely reported, of course, in the L.A. Times and other uh, news outlets that uh, your organization, the American Progressive Bag Alliance, and a lot of these other organizations that are out of the state of California, has spent uh, $3.2 million, 98% of which came from other places uh, besides California, to try to put this on the ballot. Now, once November 2016 rolls around, SB 270 will be on the state ballot. This is is a measure that it, it it's you know it's going to be like a marathon to see who outspends who are you going to be able to outspend the your opponents on this because I, they're ready to put up a fight i imagine they're going to spend millions as will you well listen I, there's a there's a long runway between now and the november election in 2016. Um, there's a lot of organization that needs to to happen there's um a long time before voters will actually start paying attention to issues that they'll have to consider on the ballot in 2016. And it's going to be, by all accounts, based on you know estimates and um, media reports and just general information that's out there, it's going to be a very crowded ballot, a number of potential tax increases um, and a variety of, of issues that voters are going to have to consider. So in that type of environment, you know, anybody who's counseling um, uh, an entity or a campaign committee that is um, looking to get a positive vote on their issue, um, you have to put together a plan that effectively communicates facts, um, whether that's through, you know, earned media, paid media, um, direct contact with voters, um, and, and doing that in a creative way. And California is a very expensive state to run campaigns in. I mean, you're talking hundreds of millions of dollars that are spent uh, during election cycles, whether for candidate campaigns or for issue campaigns, and this is going to be certainly a fight, but ultimately um, the industry knows that they are on the right side of this issue, and when you communicate the facts about it, it's impossible for the other side to deny that all of this money goes to the grocers. It just simply does. It's written in the law, but we know that people don't have all of that information uh, until they happen to peel back the layer uh, a bit. So that's something that we've been trying to communicate. And when they understand, when people understand none of this money that they're paying for these bags goes to a public purpose, we, we believe that they will overturn this bill, and that's something we're going to communicate very directly. All right. The ban, of course, on plastic bags has been on put on hold. It will no longer take place uh, this summer, thanks to the American Progressive Bag Alliance that put this thing or helped put this thing on the ballot in uh, November of 2016. And, John, uh, one final thing. i, I got to ask you, uh, even if this thing... Uh, even if you were to win in November of 2016, or let's say your opponents win, I have a feeling this fight won't be over even then. It may end up in court. It could go to the state Supreme Court. It could go all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. Do you see it that way? It's hard to speculate about um, a legal path. I think if there is a vote um, in 2016 that will be decisive on this particular issue, whether there is new legislation in um, upcoming legislative sessions or uh, some sort of other approach to this. I think the industry has been, like I said earlier, very open to talking about a responsible approach to um, educating consumers and educating the public about the responsible use, reuse, and disposal and recycling of, of plastic retail bags. But um, I think there's going to be um, a lot of discussion um, for a very long time about this issue because there's a lot of misperceptions and we find that when people really understand the facts in a lot of places outside of California where we're talking to lawmakers or we're talking to consumers or other stakeholders on this issue when they really understand the, the positive attributes of this industry of this mm -hmm. product compared to the other products out there like for example reusable bags which the majority are imported from China and are made from non-woven polypropylene which is a byproduct of petroleum when yeah. people don't use those products uh, on any number of times um, to offset the resources that are put into making them and to transport them from overseas, there are a lot of unintended consequences. 500 million of those bags per year are uh, imported from the U.S. from places like China. So yeah. that's more than enough bags for every family to have, and most of those bags don't up, end up getting used. They're stored in a closet, and they're thrown into a landfill. John, so let me, we're, let me... we're talking about, again, a 100% recyclable product where if people understand 
how to dispose of them, that there's a responsible yep. way to recycle them, that they're made into new products on an everyday basis John? because the industry is invested in the technology to recycle and but make new products out of that. R running short on time here, can you give me a 20 second answer before we go? A 20 second answer, is there a happy medium to this? I think there's a happy medium if there is a ban off the table because the industry obviously can't stand for a ban on its product which threatens the livelihood of its employees. A happy medium is a discussion around is there a way to put some money, perhaps a fee structure, on this product or a, a range of products where this money goes to a public purpose, environmental cleanups, um, things like that. And if money goes to a public purpose, I think there's a starting point for a discussion, and that's what the industry has been very clear on when they've been talking to legislators and stakeholders for several years. But okay. uh, unfortunately, that's not something that the grocers have been able to abide by. So, you know, we are at this point in time. But that is absolutely a, All right. a, a a path for compromise. All right. John Barrier from the uh, American Progressive Bag Alliance uh, talking to us via telephone from Washington, D.C. Hey, John, we appreciate your time. And next time you're passing through the Central Valley, uh, I want you to be here on the set. You're welcome to be a guest here on Connect With Me. We would appreciate that. we Will do, John. Thanks for having me on. Okay, thank you, John. Have a good weekend. Appreciate it. John Barrier, hey, three Johns on the show today. John Barrier, John Malos, and John Chukasian. We're going to be back in a moment here on Connect With Me to talk about last night's vote at the City Council. Frigidaire. It means the first electric refrigerator. The first compact electric range. Now, there's the Frigidaire Gallery Range with Symmetry Double Ovens. It's designed to cook multiple dishes at multiple temperatures so you can prepare the entire meal at the same time. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. From a top secret location, it's the spies who love me, bringing together MeTV's top super spies to fight evil at a memorable moment's notice. They're dairy. That's right. Free. Now what are we going to do? The best we can. Swab. Does that apply to me, Oscar? Possibly. And smart? The old finger in the gun trick. Maxwell Smart. Me TV Fresno. Channel 43.6 and Xfinity 187. Back here on the program on last night's uh, City Council vote at City Hall. The vote was six to one in favor to pass the mayor's water rate plan, $429 or $29 million over the next five years. Your water rates will go up. Hey, my friends, I brought my flip-flops in today. You know why? Let's go to the city council. And there she is, Esmeralda Soraya. Let me leave that up on the screen for a couple of minutes and explain what happened. The vote was six to one. The only one who voted against was Sal Quintero. Esmeralda Soraya, who wrote uh, an op-ed piece in the Fresno Bee yesterday, actually it was online on Wednesday, said she was going to vote against the measure. Now what happened last night? She wanted to talk about the Fresno Irrigation District FID's contract in actually uh, conveying that water to the city of Fresno, capturing it from the Kings River, and then delivering uh, that water to residents here in the Fresno area. Uh, Oliver Baines, the president of the council, called a break. They went behind closed doors, and Esmeralda changed her mind. She flip-flopped, my friends. Now, I will say this also about Esmeralda. I asked her to come on the program here on Wednesday to discuss what vote she will take. Would it be yes or no? She said she did not want to reveal her vote before Thursday, yet she turned right around and wrote an op-ed piece for the Fresno Bee that appeared online on Wednesday and in Thursday's Fresno Bee prior to a vote. Steve Brown Dow uh, voted uh, yes. He was another kind of a flip-flopper. Oliver Baines was a yes all along. Uh, Mr. Paul voted yes. We'll change uh, the pictures. Sal Quintero on this program said he would vote no, and he voted no. Lee Brand, a yes. Clint Olivier, he was kind of on the fence and he went with a yes vote. But here's the thing about Esmeralda. She rode her bike, she walked uh, uh, house to house in her precinct, in her district, 
uh, you know, pandering for votes when she was uh, looking to get into office, well, I'd like her to go door to door right now and ask her constituents, those people that voted her in, whether or not they can afford these water rates, these high water rates that are going to go into effect. It's going to raise your bill. It's going to triple your bill in the next uh, five years. I want Esmeralda to go door to door the way she did when she was campaigning and ask her constituents as to whether or not they can afford these water rates and explain why she changed her vote. I want to go to the map. The reason they want all this uh, change and they want money out of your pocket is to build a water treatment plant out on the east side of Fresno. It has to do with the development out there that will take place, part of the 2035 plan. The water rates, let's put those up real quick before we got to go. Uh, these are not exact figures, but by the end of year five, you're going to be paying a little more than $49 a month for water. The mayor of Fresno endorsed this from day one. I have to say this, City Hall is being run like the House of Cards, the show on Netflix with Kevin Spacey. Mark Standriff, on the other hand, let's put his picture up, still has not returned our call, 621-8000. The mail-ins had more than 50,000, more than 41,000 valid no's that were returned uh, to Fresno City Hall, to the clerk's office that said, no, we don't want our water rates to go up. So remember this come election time, my friends, six to one was the vote. Sal Quintero was the lone no. Esmeralda, she flip-flopped right here. She flip-flopped, and I guess you could say maybe Steve Brandau did too. We're back with another edition of Connect With Me on MeTV Fresno right here on Monday. Hope you have a great weekend. Stay safe, everybody. Thank you for watching. Yeah.